All right. Uh, good morning, everybody. Now, uh, we are just going to continue from the point where we have left, and we were covering the capacitated facet location problem the last time. And we were thinking about adding the fixed routing costs here. But before that, let's remind ourselves about the capacitated facet location problem. Now, a uh, capacitated facet location problem is founded on the basis of the P medium problem, basically. Remember now, in the P medium problem, uh, if we add fixed setup costs of constructing a facet in location I in our model, that model will become the N capacitated facet location problem. The constraint set consists of the constraints that we observe in the P medium problem. Again, the only difference is the cost component related to the construction cost, fixed construction costs here, which will be added in the objective function. We are multiplying the fixed construction costs in each potential facet location with the decision variable that indicates if we are going to open a facility or not in that facet location and sum them over the uh, location set, basically. Now, in the capacitated facet location problem, there are three major differences. We have mentioned about this in our previous course. And we say that uh, this time, whenever you intend to open a facility in a potential location, that facility will also come with a periodic production capacity. So in earlier assumptions, we were assuming that the capacity uh, was infinite. Basically, the capacity was not an issue in the P medium problem or the uncapacitated facility location problem. But this time, when you intend to open a facility at a certain location, the capacity the, will remain finite, which means using the periodic production capacity, it will only be possible to serve to a finite number of customer locations. So in our previous assumption, we were saying that every customer was going to be assigned to the closest facility because the capacity was not issue. But this time, considering the capacity constraint, it may not be possible to uh, assign the whole demand uh, of a certain customer to be met by a certain facility or the closest facility. Now, again, because of that reason, since it may not be possible to meet the demand of a certain customer fully by the existing capacity of a certain facility, we, we may think about fractioning uh, the demand of a certain customer and assign each fraction to a uh, facility, separate facility location. So this means the demand of a certain customer may not be met fully by a specific facility at a specific location, but it can be partialized and it can be met by multiple facilities at different locations. So we must thinking about how to fractionalize the demand of the customer. And again, our objective here is not to open P facilities. Now the difference of the problem is, uh, again, we are removing the P median constraints. Here, our objective is to minimize the total construction and the transportation cost while meeting the demand of the customers and um, a number of facilities with sufficient capacity is just enough. So we may open less than P facilities, maybe more than P facilities, maybe exactly P facilities here. We are intending to open facilities which are going to be having a sufficient capacity to meet the demand of the customers and which introduced the minimum total transportation and the construction cost. Now, basically, when you open additional facilities in your distribution network, obviously the uh, costs of distribution are going to decrease. 
Okay, the transportation costs are going to decrease. However, with each additional facility, your facility construction costs will increase. Therefore, while we have an increasing cost component with every addition of a facility, there is a decreasing cost component, which is the transportation cost. There should be a trade-off between those and we should keep the balance with a sufficient number of facilities which will optimize the total cost of construction and transportation in our model. The main difference in the model parameters of this problem was the periodic supply capacity of the potential facility in candidate location I. So when you intend to open a facility at location I, it will come with a periodic capacity SI, which means that the total amount of the demand made by all customers from this facility should never exceed SI. However, if you choose to open a facility at that location, the location variables and the assignment variables, the decision variables of the problem were the same as the P median and the uncapacitated facility location problem. But the main difference is the assignment variables are not binary anymore. But location variables should be binary. Remember now, when we were talking about the P median problem, we have told that if you apply LP relaxation to the binary decision variables of the P median problem, if you apply the LP relaxation of the binary decision variables of the P median problem, you would still get the same optimum solution. The LP relaxation does not change the optimum solution of the uh, original model we have said and it would be better if you solve this problem because you wouldn't like to be dealing with the branch and bound algorithm for integer programming models instead you are just going to solve a single linear programming model for one time which is still going to be too long to solve so lp relaxation is a working idea for the p median model now in the capacitated facility location problem, we should say that the assignment variables xij should be continuous variables, non-binary. Okay, why? Because xij here will represent the fraction of demand of the customer j, which will be assigned to facility location i. So the customers demand may be fractionalized and each fraction may be assigned to a different facility because of the capacity issues the capacity constraints therefore we are not just going to force the assignment variables to be zero or one we are going to uh, enable assigning a fractional value between zero and one for the xij values to represent the fraction of the demand that is going to be met of customer J from location I. Now, when you do that, when you do that, it may seem as if it is an LP relaxation. However, it is not, my friends. When you do that, when you have the capacity constraints in the optimum solution, you may definitely end up with fractional values as well. Okay. So for this model, when we are going to develop it, due to the demand constraints, unfortunately, the extreme points of the feasible solution space may contain rational values as well, non-integer values as well. Now, the location variables are still binary because you all either choose to open a facility or not in a location. Therefore, the uh, I am very sorry, there's a misprint here. This uh, should not be xij, but it should be yi because we are explaining yi here. So there is this misprint. Now, yi is a binary variable, again, which indicates if we open a facility or not in the i-th location. Now, if you apply LP relaxation to the location variables here, my friends, unfortunately, you may get a different type of solution here. Therefore, it may be dangerous to apply the LP relaxation for these integer variables. In the end, in the model that we are going to develop for this problem, we are just going to have integer values for the yi and uh, continuous values for the xij. So what are the differences in the constraints? The objective function remains the same as in the uncapacitated facility location problem. 
we say that the total demand of a certain customer J should be assigned by fractionalizing to multiple uh, facility locations. Therefore, the fractions of the demand that is assigned to multiple customer locate uh, multiple facilities from the first facility to the end facility, if we are going to open them, of course, should be summing up to one for a specific customer. So the fractions of the demands assigned to the facilities should sum up to one. So the demand of that customer would be met. Now we need to write the capacity constraints. So the second set of constraints indicating the demand constraints, we need to write the capacity constraints here. We should say that if you open a facility in location I, if you open a facility in location I, we should not exceed this capacity, right? The capacity is aside. The periodic capacity should not be exceeded by the service that we allocate to several customers. Now we say that if we assign XIJ fraction of the demand of customer J to the facility in location I, and if we do that for several customers, by running a summation over this assigned fraction of demand for each customer to facility location I, we will be calculating the total demand that is going to be assigned to facility at location I. Now, assuming that there is a facility in location I, of course, this summation as a first component should be less than or equal to the capacity of the facility which is SI. Now this is should this is going to be a constraint that we should be careful about if we choose to open a facility in location I. However, if we do not choose to open a facility at location I, then the corresponding XIJ values are going to be equal to zero also because we should force them to be equal to zero. If there is not a facility at location I none of the customer J's should be served from that facility at location I. No fraction of the demand of theirs should be served from facility location I. Therefore, we are adapting this constraint to that fact by multiplying the capacity with the, the decision variable, which indicates if we are opening a facility or not, which is YI. And since SI is going to be multiplied with II, why I, we are going to take this component to the left hand side of the inequality to write it in the constraint form where the decision variables are always collected on the left hand side and the constant values are collected on the right hand side. So if there is a facility in I location, its capacity will remain SI and the total demand that is allocated by several customers to that facility should not exceed SI. However, if there's not a facility there, SI will be multiplied with zero, which will automatically force all XIJ values to be equal to zero as well. Now, XIJ values are not now continuous variables, therefore they should be less than or equal to one and also greater than or equal to zero, non-negative, and YI values are still binary. So this is a mixed integer programming model for the capacitated facility location problem. Now, we are just skipping further to the main topic. We are going to add the fixed routing costs to the facility location problem. Now, let's just say if you want to make a delivery of at least one unit of shipment from a facility at location I to a customer in location If you are going to do something like this, then we assume that <coughs> there is a fixed cost of routing from location I to location J, and that is going to be denoted by HIJ. Okay. Now, along with the marginal cost of transportation, remember now the marginal cost of transportation is cij for each unit of demand that met however you are only meeting xij fraction of that demand from facility location i therefore 
this component was calculating the marginal cost of transportation mainly. So here we are adding this HIJ parameters in our model as a fixed cost of routing from location I to location J. Now, here's the thing. So we are thinking about opening our facilities by a decision variable, binary decision variable. And this time we are going to think about using a certain route to meet the demand of customer J from facility I. Now, we may think about using that route or not. Not This time the customers are not just going to take service from the closest facility. They are going to take services from available facilities which have a slack capacity, basically. Of course, choosing the closest, uh, closest facility is also a partial objective. However, uh, maybe we are not going to open any facility at that location due to huge construction costs. Maybe there will be only a, a limited amount of slack capacity left after serving to multiple customers. Therefore, we should say that um, we may not be thinking about using that route for the delivery. And this time, since there's a fixed routing cost, this fixed routing cost may be too large for a certain route, even though the construction cost of that facility is low or the marginal transportation costs are low, due to the fixed routing costs, we may think about serving that customer location from another facility, which is further. Uh, therefore, we are going to indicate a decision variable here this time again after deciding about the facility to open or not in a, at a certain location we should think about using a certain route to serve customer j from that facility so wij is going to be a binary decision variable which indicates if we are going to make a positive amount of shipment from location i to location j only if wij is one, then the corresponding xij value can also be equal to one. So again, there will be a contingency between the wij values and xij values, and in fact, between yi values and wij values. So uh, there is a, a three-way contingency here, basically. If yi's are one, then the corresponding xij's can also be equal to a positive value. If yi's are zero, then xij values should also be zero. If yi's are one, but wij values are zero, in that case, xij values should be zero as well. If yi's one and wij's values are also one, then xij values can also be positive, but limited to one again because xijs re uh, represent fractions which cannot be greater than one uh, therefore there is a three-way contingency here so yi is dependent on wij values wij values are dependent on xij values obviously yi values are dependent on xij values so such a contingency can be introduced by two-way relationships between yi and xij and xij and wij mainly so first focus on the objective function which is rather easier to understand so we have the construction cost component transportation cost component now we are going to pay a fixed routing cost hij if we make a positive um, shipment positive amount of shipment from I vessel to the jade location. So we are multiplying HIJ fixed cost with WIJ indicator variable. Since these components are going to be summed over two indices, again, because we are thinking about the routes here and the routes are defined between each couple of locations, we are adding this component into the second cost component in the second cost component again we have the transportation cost but this time we have the marginal transportation cost and also fixed transportation cost of using routes 
The second set of constraints indicate that the fraction of the demand for a certain customer J uh, assigned to multiple facilities should sum up to one. Of course, they cannot be negative. This means they can only be positive fractions. And WIJ, uh, XIJ values can be at most equal to one. Um, now, you see XIJ values are non-negative. The fact that the XIJ values are non-negative cannot make any XIJ value here greater than one, obviously. Now, we should also say that there is this capacity constraint, as mentioned previously, it remains the same. The only difference, not only difference, but the main difference here is we need to relate XIJ with WIJ here as well. Now, if WIJ is zero, which means you are not going to use the route from I to J for a, any shipment, then XIJ should be forced to zero, which means XIJ should be less than WIJ. If WIJ is zero or less than or equal to WIJ, if WIJ is zero, then XIJ should be zero as well. But if WIJ is one, then XIJ can take any fractional value between zero and one. Okay, it's free to go. Now, if XIJ is positive, however, let's look from the other side. If XIJ is positive, which means we are thinking about meeting a fraction of the demand of customer J from facet location I, then this means we should think about using the route between ij okay so wij should be forced to be equal to one because it's binary even if xij is a very small amount since wij is binary it should be forced to be equal to one so we are still writing xij minus wij to be less than or equal to zero here so the relation the WIJ and XIJ values are related with each other. YI and XIJ values are related with each other. So all contingency, all contingent relationships between the decision variables are indicated by these constraints by introducing the first set of constraints. However, introduction of the first set of constraints is again complicating this problem because we are adding n square main constraints here. We have too many. Uh, binary decision variables, n square plus n, many binary decision variables. This time, it will not be possible to relax this problem using the helper relaxation. Now, this problem with the fixed routing cost is just going to be a very complex problem to solve. Uh, basically, that's the story. And how we are going to... Uh, give an instance for this problem. Remember, we were always thinking about this instance to understand the nature of the problem. Here for the capacity to test the location problem, imagine you have six cities. Again, to some of these six cities, you are going to open facilities. Okay, this time we are not going to open three or two or four. This is not a fixed number of facilities that we are going to open. We are going to open facilities only to some of these. Uh, locations, maybe only one of them, but our objective is to meet the demand of all customers from the available facilities. Okay, now this table gives us the fixed routing cost. So if you want to make a delivery from Istanbul to Ankara, even if you are sending one unit, you need to pay this $35,000 of cost. Let's just say this is the fixed routing cost if you use that route. Now, uh with the values that we have used in our previous problems so let me show an example of the previous problem so there is a misdirection here it says problem five but we do not have any problem numbers here for the uh, facility capacitated uncapacitated facility location problem we have the setup costs and we have the demands here and we have the distances here. So along with this table here in our earlier example, we are going to think about the fixed routing costs here. And we are just going to open a sufficient number of facilities. And in the end, our objective should be minimizing the total cost of construction and marginal and fixed transportation costs. 
such that we will be meeting demand of the customer. So basically, this problem can be solved by the capacitated facility location problem model here uh, with the fixed routing cost, basically. However, it will be complex to solve. Uh, here, there is a limited number of feasible solutions in any way. Maybe giving a list of the possible feasible solutions and calculating the cost of them is just going to be a lot easier than solving it with the linear programming approach. Uh, however, for large problem, uh, a, a linear programming approach may give the only optimum solution or you may end up with a suboptimal solution using an acceptable heuristic methodology. So this is the reading assignment regarding to the facility location problems here, uh, P median, P center and the facility location problems. You are just going to make your readings from multiple resources this time and there's an exercise in page 171 in Sarko and Newton's book, so you can also focus on that.